slide, but I will post it later because I believe this is a word that all of our church needs to hear to push us into 2024. I will begin reading at verse number 12 of chapter 2. I will surely assemble all of you, Jacob. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together like sheep in the fold, like a flock in the midst of its pasture. They will be noisy with men. The breaker goes up before them. They break out and they pass through the gate and go by it. So their king goes on before them and the Lord at their head. Verse 13 says, the breaker, the Messiah, the breaker, goes up before them and they break out and pass through the gate and they go by it. Father, I pray that you bless this word tonight. God, if it's your will, let me be done by midnight. If not, let me forget the clock. I pray, Lord, that you speak through me tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tonight I want to deliver, this is the last message of 2023 from this pulpit. I believe this to be a prophetic word for the church and that's why I feel like it is so important. Tonight from this holy desk, I declare that Jesus the Messiah, the breaker, is going before us and we will break through. For too long we have lived behind the walls of exile. We Priority. We've lived behind the walls of depression and oppression. We've settled in a foreign land long enough. I believe we've depended on our captors to provide for us long enough. I'm going to say that again. We have de depended on the people that imprisoned us to provide us food. We've depended on those that has held us captive to give us bread. We have depended upon the captors long enough. We have trusted that the land of our captivity would bring us what we needed but not anymore because this is our year of breakthrough and I declare that Jesus the breaker is going before us and walls of captivity is being broken the walls of imprisonment is being knocked down in Jesus name somebody say amen Jesus is providing a new gate in the wall, and we're going to walk out of this land into a land of prosperous, a land that is prosperous, and a land that is peaceful, and a land that is full of provision. It's time for the rising fine church of God and those under the umbrella to experience breakthrough. Jesus, the way maker, is the one that breaks open, breaks down, and breaks up the obstacles, opening the way to new territories, new inheritances and a new destiny. Jesus the breaker is for us tonight and he's going to free us tonight and I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus new doors are going to open into new areas. New opportunities will present themselves. New places and new positions are opening up because finally we're in the right time, in the right place, in the right season and Jesus the breaker goes before us. Isaiah chapter 10 Verse 33 through 34, behold the Lord, the God of armies. Ah, oh, help me, Jesus. Behold the Lord, the God of armies, will lop off the branches with terrifying power. Those also who are tall in stature will be cut down, and those who are lofty will be brought low. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with an iron axe, and Lebanon will fall by the mighty one. Pastor Chris, what does that even mean? The Lord will bring down the high and the mighty, the positions of authority that are ruled illegally in our lives. They do not have to hinder us any longer. In the name of the Lord, I'm just coming as one who's going to declare in this year of breakthrough, the Lord's going to bring down every high and loft and mighty position, the high and mighty forces of authority that have controlled your destiny, the high and mighty forces that have controlled your life will be toppled. The underbrush that has always entangled your life will finally be cleared away. The mighty spirit of intimidation 
and oppression will be cut down. I believe God is beginning to topple things in our lives. As Summer says, the root was finally exposed and she has been able to finally deal with issues. I believe the breaker is going before us into this new year to top off those things and we're going to surrender to him and he is going to move in our lives and we're going to see finally a path that is clear. Oh my goodness, because I believe for so long there's been a path covered with underbrush. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rising fun, God is clearing the path and we will walk into our season of breakthrough without having to worry about underbrush. Jesus has already ordered our steps. He's planned our ways. And so I just surrender to him. I just say, God, have your way. Have your way, mighty God. Have everybody say that. From our text that I read to you, Micah 12 and 13, the word breaker is the Hebrew word parats, which means the one who breaks up, the one who goes before to give strength to break through. Breakthrough is the word abar, which means to pass over or cross over. According to scholars, parats can also mean to impregnate with concepts, ideas, and purpose. The seed is planted and it goes through the growth process. Tonight, let me quickly give you three types of breakthrough. There's three types of breakthrough. The first one is suddenly. Everybody shout, suddenly. Oh, this is what we all want. This is what, oh, we get frustrated if we don't have a suddenly. And I'm, and I'm grateful. I believe we're moving into suddenly seasons. I believe we're moving into the Amos paradigm where the reapers are going to overtake the sowers. I believe everything is coming to a, to, to, a, to a point where all the words of prophetic is coming into alignment with the fulfillment. Why? Because Jesus is coming soon. And we've got things have got to begin to line up. The promises of God cannot always dangle out here because Jesus is coming. And every promise will be fulfilled. So therefore, the time is drawing nigh to where prophetic words and the fulfillment of those words and prophetic promises and the fulfillment of those promises are coming to pass. And I'm grateful for sudden breakthroughs where all of a sudden it burst up in the situations and the hindrances are God and God comes and it breaks up and instantly, whoa, whoa, wow, I'm free. Yeah. Oh God, I love suddenlies. Can somebody just say, give me a suddenly? Am I the only one that needs a Suddenly. This year I've decided, Mandy, I will only register once for the HGTV home giveaway. I don't take the home. I don't take the home. I only take the cash value of the home and the car and the $100,000 to go along. I've said, God, I, I used to register every day and pray over it. Today, this year, I just said, God, one time. And I will know it's your will if I only win with one register. God, I need that suddenly. Number two. Growth. You got to grow your way out of it. Sometimes breakthrough requires you to grow, like Trina, who had to grow and begin to transform the culture of her spirit. And with growth, you begin to understand the way out. As you begin to grow, you begin to comprehend. All of a sudden, as you grow, you see the visions of other doors to get you out. And with the assistance of the Holy Ghost and the holy wisdom of God, you begin to achieve supernatural breakthrough, not suddenly, but because you applied yourself in the Word and you applied yourself to, the, to, to faith, and all of a sudden you become stronger and you break out and you break through. He grows your faith and your strength, which leads you to open doors. Sometimes it ain't going to happen Suddenly, sometimes you go through the process and you grow your way out of it. And then number three, you impregnate your soul. You impregnate your soul. Some breakthroughs occur from God planting that seed. But then you got to nourish it. You got to care for it. You got to protect the womb of your soul until it's time for it to break out and live outside of the womb. Listen, some promises must be cared for. 
If you don't nurture it in your soul, it will not live on the outside of your soul. Some of you are hoping just to have a miracle living on the outside. No, no, sometimes it's got to be birthed out of you. And out of that breakthrough comes. Out of the birthing, you've got to get pregnant with a word that the word becomes full. And all of a sudden, now it's living on the outside of you. We need the breakthrough of the word. However, whether it's suddenly or whether it's through growth or whether it's impregnating your soul, we have got to understand that breakthrough is not beneficial for us if we carry the old us. And I mentioned that this morning. We cannot carry the old us into the new land. Too often God moves us into a new place and we contaminate it because we've never changed. We take the old mindsets into a new place and expect it to be new. But it's not new because I'm still thinking like I did in the old place. I'm thinking like I did when I was in Egypt. And I'm not in Egypt anymore, but my mindset is still to want and desire and complain and, and live as if I'm still in Egypt. And, and if I continue that, I will begin to always bring myself back into condemnation. So soon the new place is so messed up. Listen, I can tear, carry all my baggage and move to New York, and New York still has my baggage. Changing my city will not change me. If I'm not changed internally with the word of the Lord, it doesn't matter where I go, I'm still there. And some people trying to escape problems, and the problem is wherever they are because it's them or it's in them. Amen, somebody. They ain't here. So you might as well say amen real loud. Amen. We have all prayed for new places. We have prayed for breakthroughs in the past. We've prayed for new seasons in our lives. But we've always had the same results year after year. In order to sustain real breakthrough, we must be willing to go through the process. The process of change. A change in your mind, a change in your soul, a change in your spirit. And it seems that we've said this multiple times, we must be willing to die. Flip with me to 2 Corinthians. Six minutes, unless you live where Adam and I live, and it's an hour and six minutes. I think we're going to ring in the new year, Alabama time. Flip with me quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let me just teach you quickly, and I will do this quickly because I, I see some of your eyes are like, ooh, well, I didn't know this was what midnight looked like. Huh? I, didn't, I, didn't, I ain't never been in this church at midnight. This is pretty cool. Let me, let me just give you quick instructions. I can do this in six minutes. <laughs> For the love of Christ, let's, let's back up, verse 13. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are of the sound mind, it is for you. Look at verse 14. For the love of Christ controls us. The love of Christ controls us. Having concluded this, that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, that we who live no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. In other words, I don't no longer live for myself. The love of God controls me. How many of you are being controlled by your love and your passion of God, or are we still being controlled by our own desires and all our own needs? The Bible says, let us die so that Christ can live. Verse 15, he died for all so that all who live might no longer live for themselves. For him who died rose again on their behalf. Therefore now on we recognize no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known the Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him in this way no longer. There, now here's the verse everybody knows. This is the verse Adam loves to preach. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Don't we love that? Don't we quote that? But we never talk about the things that come new is after I die. Until I am controlled by the love of Christ, 
Until I no longer live unto myself, things don't become new. If you want a breakthrough in 2024, if we're going to sustain it, then you've got to understand things become new once I die. When I die to my flesh, then all things are made new because it's no longer I who live, it's Christ who lives in me. Because I'm dead. A dead man has no desires. A dead man has no reason to be angry. A dead man has no reason to be jealous. A dead man has no need for lust. Uh, a dead man has no need for addiction. So when we die to Christ, all of a sudden, every plague of my life that has bound me no longer binds me. Therefore, all things are new. And I am made new in the resurrection of Jesus Christ because when I die to him, now he resurrects in me. As long as I'm living, he can't resurrect in me. So I die, he resurrects, and all things become new. We've got to stop living for ourselves and begin to live for Christ. Maybe the first key to breakthrough is to die. Do we want breakthrough? Do we want Jesus the Messiah, the breaker to come for us? And do we want breakthrough? Then let's, let us die. Let's die. Let's die. I'm going through the gate of breakthrough. I'm going to live my old self behind, my old desires behind, and I'm moving into a new land with a new mind and a new spirit I, with the heart of Christ. I no longer live for my desires or for my love. I'm living for the love of Christ, and it's no longer I who live now. It's Christ that lives in me. I die to my desires. I die to my selfish motives. I must be willing to give up my spirit, give up myself, give up. Me. Maybe I'm the reason breakthrough has not yet occurred. Can you say that? Maybe my flesh keeps pushing my agenda. Maybe my flesh keeps trying to keep a foreign fire burning. It seems innocent, but it's driving me. Have you noticed how our prayers are always full of our desires. I know y'all sleeping. One minute, and I'm going to say Happy New Year, and then I'm going to finish this message. Have you noticed how your prayers are full of your desires? We go to the Lord, God, please give me. God, please help me. God, please lift my burden. God, please save my family. God, please pay my bills. God, it's all about your desires. Y'all are so quiet. Our worship is laced with our motives. Our songs are harmonized with our aspirations. Because we have not died to ourselves. In this new year, let us learn there must become times, as I mentioned this morning, and you're going to hear it repeatedly over the next few months, Happy New Year. Everybody say Happy New Year. Happy new year. In Georgia, it's 2024. In Alabama, they got an hour to go. Amy, it's just 11 o'clock. Just 11. We done got up twice to use the bathroom normally. In this new year, in 2024... We have to learn there may be times of silence. There may be time of stillness. A time to where we let God have all of us, even our voices. And we desire God. Now listen to what I'm about to say, and believe it or not, I am almost done. Let us desire God, not what's in his hand of provision. Because a lot of times we seek God for what's in the hand of provision. We beg God to bless because his hand of provision, there's nothing wrong with that. Thank God he provides. He's Jehovah Jireh and he provides all of my needs. But I want to seek him not for his hand of provision. I want to seek him because of his heart. I want to seek him. I want to draw here near to him for the holiness of who he is. I want to get lost in his presence, not because he's going to give me money to pay my car payment. I want to get lost in him because he's holy and he's wonderful and he's God.
God wants to provide breakthrough in 2024. He wants it to be a year of release. He desires, as I said this morning, to move us into a new era. He told me that months ago, I wrote it in my journal, this is not a new season, it's a new era in my ministry, in this congregation. We have had enough seasonal change, but now we're moving to a whole nother era. Yes, seasons will come and go, but what was will no longer be because God has taken us to a new place. We've got to be willing, however, though, if we're going to sustain it to die. Let's come together tonight into the presence of the Lord. Let's be sanctified by the word of God. Let us die to our flesh. In this year of breakthrough, it means it has to be a year of death. Death to our pride, death to our desires, to our greed. We no longer live for us. We no longer live for our love, for our stuff. We live for him. I believe breakthrough can and will be suddenly. I believe it can, we can, like Trina, grow into breakthrough. Sometimes we get pregnant. And nine months later, although God's nine months sometimes are longer than nine months. Sister Brenda says, it's been about a bunch of years. But don't you know, once you get that word, breakthrough comes. I'm going to expound on this topic much more over the next few weeks, months. Because I know that God wants this church, has destined and promised and purpose for us, but we have to leave Egypt. We have to leave a place that was and move into a place that is. The breaker has gone before us. I'm not doing this on my own. We're not going to do this on our own. We're doing this in the name of Jesus Christ. The breaker goes up before them. They break out. They pass through the gate. They go by it. So the king goes on before them. And the Lord is at their hand. I declare the breaker has gone before us. Haglers, if you'll come. Sister Nikki, you'll have to turn the piano mic all the way up for a little Sadie. I believe 2024 with all my heart is a year of breakthrough. The Lord gave me a vision a few days ago, and I've been, I've been, you know, sometimes you don't know how quick you should share stuff. And since this is a smaller crowd, I'm going to share it. And then if I get chastised, God, please be merciful. I was standing in the parking lot of the church, very cloudy, stormy night. Not raining, not lightning, just, you know, that darkness that hovers over. And from our front porch door was this glow. Have you heard me say glow, let the glory of the Lord glow, glow, glory. I've prayed that prayer in this building since this vision. And I saw this glow coming from the door. And I stood there for a moment noticing how dark everything was. And in the middle of the darkness was this glow from our door. And I wanted to go in for a moment. And yet I couldn't go in. And in my mind I kept on going, but God, I don't understand. I want to move into this glory. I want to go to where the light is. And then I was able to see still dark everywhere and out of the six windows in this building the glory began to just flood out of the windows so i knew that not only the four because in my mind i was thinking why are you only at the door why god are you only in the foyer and then i began to see the glow penetrating out of all six windows in all directions And then I began, as I mentioned this morning, I began to see the swelling of our walls pushing out. And for a moment, I wasn't sure what that was happening. And then I saw them move back in. And then I saw them push out again as the glow got brighter. And then I realized it was the breath of God breathing into our congregation. 
And I could see our building expanding as the breath of God breathed into this church. But then I turned around being led by the Spirit and I could see down Highway 11. This is interesting. And there were car after car after cars after cars after cars after car after car after car turning into this. All of them in darkness, no headlights on, in a stark night, dark, almost black and white coming into color. And in my mind, I kept, I looked to the south because I, what I pray is from all directions. And I kept on expecting to see that same long line coming from south. But there's only a few that came from the south turning in. And they would take turns turning. But I could see way, way, as far as I could see, cars lined up coming to the glow of the glory. I believe God, the breaker, has gone before us. And if we'll die, he will glow. And if we let him glow, people will come. Out of their darkness, they will be hungry to come to the glow of God's glory. Out of their neediness, out of their depression, out of their anxiety, out of their desperation, there will be a glow that exceeds out of our doors and draws people here. But we must die. The girls are going to start singing. I want you to stand with me. They're going to sing a song that I asked. Then they're going to sing the communion song. They're going to be mad at me because they prepared about 30 minutes worth of music and I ain't letting them do that. Well, they may. The Holy Ghost might.